The Russian town of Merny is home to one of the most productive diamond mines in the country that also happens to be one of the biggest man-made holes in the world. After World War II, the Soviet Union was in need of money to help it rebuild. In 1955, they deployed a huge team of geologists to look for kimberlite fragments and indicator minerals that hint at the presence of diamonds. Three geologists hit the mother load in the Siberian wilderness, 5,000 miles east of Moscow. Stalin was so grateful that he awarded one of the geologists the Lenin Prize, one of Russia's top honors. In 1957, construction began on the open pit Mirny diamond mine, also known as the Mir Mine. This was no small task. The average winter temperature in the area is negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, cold enough to freeze oil and shatter car tires, and creating a thick layer of permafrost that covered the ground. The average winter lasts for seven months. During the brief periods that the permafrost melts, it forms a slush just as treacherous for construction. The crew had to use jet engines to thaw the ground and explosives to break through the permafrost. Three years later, the mine was operational. It had grown to an astounding 1,722 feet deep and over half a mile wide, making it the second largest excavated hole in the world after the Bingham Canyon copper mine in Utah. Miners extracted 10 million carats of diamonds per year during the 1960s. Nearly a quarter of those were considered gem quality. The largest gems were the size of golf balls, including the 130.85 carat Olonko diamond, which was valued at close to $430,000. Even larger was the unsold 342.57 carat, the 26th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union yellow diamond, the largest ever found in the country. All told, the mine produced $13 billion worth of diamonds, a number so impressive that diamond distributors like De Beers grew suspicious. If Mirny Mine kept it up, the company would have trouble maintaining control over diamond prices. Representatives from De Beers asked to inspect the mine in 1970. Russia stalled for six years. Even after the request was granted, the Russians created so many delays upon the inspector's arrival in Moscow that their visas were nearly expired by the time they got to the mine. De Beers' reps only had 20 minutes for their inspection. When the Soviet Union fell, local companies took over the operation of the mine. It was closed suddenly in 2004 due to flooding and the fact that trying to mine any deeper would be too dangerous. The dangers of the mine extended into the sky as well. Warm air from the mine meeting cold air from the surface created a vortex that was so strong it could pull down small aircraft and helicopters. Several incidents of aircraft being sucked downward were reported, luckily none of them crashed. In response, the airspace above the mine was restricted. Mining was halted, but underground research into diamonds continued. Then, in 2010, the Russian company AB Elise declared its intention to build a futuristic solar-powered domed city inside the mine that would house over 10,000 residents. No actual plans followed the announcement. Until Mirny Mine finds a new life as a city of the future, it will be remembered for having produced more than half of the diamonds in the world, giving Mother Russia the means to return to its former glory. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of history's weirdness that you won't find in your textbooks. All those textbooks that you had to give back. No one has their textbooks anymore, right? I don't have mine. Anyway, there's this video here. There's this one here. There's more stuff here. There's more good stuff. If you liked it, stick around.